this is a study by Caspi, who was one of my colleagues at the Institute of Psychiatry, um, showing the effect of a particular um, gene. No one gene is responsible for the genetic effects on depression. It's almost certainly a, a multi-gene field. But uh, there are certain gene locations that have attracted a lot of research interest. This is one of them, the serotonin transporter gene. It's got a lot of letters, but better known perhaps as CERT, serotonin transporter. Uh, now, you inherit um, one form from each parent so that you can have uh, two of the short form uh, or two of the long or one short, one long. And it turns out that the more short ones you've got, the more short alleles of the serotonin transporter gene, the more susceptible you are to life's stresses. And this is Caspi's results. That's the, um, the measure of uh, proneness to depression. And this is the number of stressful uh, life events that that person has been exposed to. And you can see that the people with the two short alleles uh, pack up under stress much more rapidly. But it is, um, it is only under life stress that they are more prone to depression. So it is a gene-environment interaction. Now, what is stressful in the environment? Any change in our lives seems to be stressful. And it doesn't matter too much whether that change uh, is uh, a negative one, like getting divorced or losing your spouse, uh, or actually what many people would think of as a positive one, like getting married um, or a marital reconciliation. That any change in your life pattern requires adjustment and is stressful. That's been known for some time. And as I mentioned earlier, that uh, it is possible in the research to sort the environmental uh, ex or stressful experiences into those that uh, might be causal, in the sense that it is a, a misfortune that you could not do anything about, and others where the, the individual's own behavior may have contributed in some way. And it seems that about one-third is down to um, mismanagement, depression-prone individuals making bad choices in life. So it's a very complex thing, the interaction between the genes and the environment. Now, the effect of the serotonin transporter gene has been linked to certain uh, brain areas, and in particular, emotional circuits connecting the cingulate cortex here and the amygdala here. The amygdala is the sort of the powerhouse of emotions. It's a, it's a threat center, if you like. And this is the area of the cortex which is there to modulate it uh, or handle it in some way, regulate it. And what the research of these people suggests is that uh, people with short certs, emotion-prone people, uh, tend to have smaller areas of gray matter in, uh, in this area, the cingulate cortex, which makes it more difficult uh, for them to regulate uh, output from the amygdala. They have poorer regulation of their emotions, and it is this, apparently, which makes them more stress-prone. The um, depression is obviously connected with uh, the activity in certain neurotransmitters. They're called monoamines uh, they, as, a, as a group, because there is one amine group. I don't know enough about the organic chemistry to tell you what, what that means, but uh, uh, it involves one nitrogen and uh, various other things attached to it, but it comes as an organic group. Uh, which links to these monoamines. Uh, and three of them are particularly interesting in connection with depression. Serotonin, which seems to modulate our mood. It's a contentment hormone, you might say. <laughs> the high levels of serotonin go with being rather relaxed about life. Uh, norepinephrine uh, 
seems to control alertness. It's, a, it's like the, the brain's equivalent of adrenaline. In fact, chemically, I think it is pretty much like adrenaline. And the third one is dopamine, which uh, is associated with the pleasure and reward system and obviously is involved in addiction. Now, these are organized as circuits which run, start around the brain stem uh, and the midbrain and then radiate to all parts of the cortex. That's the serotonin system, and this is norepinephrine. Something a little bit similar uh, can be seen with dopamine. Now, the interesting thing is that most of the standard antidepressants amplify monoamines. Uh, possibly all three of them, possibly only one or two of them. And uh, the effects of psychological therapies, things like cognitive behavior therapy, may produce the same chemistry uh, from, a starting, from a different starting point. 